Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to present our conference paper in IEEE FLAPS 2021. And my name is Le Xing. I'm a PhD student from the University of Manchester. The title of this paper and presentation is Opportunities and Challenges for Flexible and Printable Electrodes in Electroencephalography. And this slide shows a big picture of our live research today. Actually, we are looking at many areas, including printed and flexible electrodes and electronics, also the physiological monitoring and brain computer interfaces, as well as signal processing with machine learning algorithms and so on. As for myself, my main focus is novel EEG electrode development. Okay, let's go on. This is a review paper and the objective of our paper is firstly to overview the current state of the art EEG electrodes manufacturing methods. The second one is to highlight the challenges present in the current EEG electrodes development. And the final one is to suggest the potential research directions for making better EEG electrodes. And then firstly, let me give you a brief introduction to the background of this paper. The EEG is electro sing electrical signal generated from the neuronal actions within the brain and is recorded by the electrodes on the scalp. The EEG has a lot of excellent properties such as high time resolution, good portability, and low cost. So it has been widely used from diagnosis of brain disorders such as epilepsy, coma, stroke, etc., to non-invasive brain computer interfaces, including sleep enhancement and memory consolidation, etc. And then in terms of the EEG setup and electrodes, the white silver and silver chloride electrode is a gold standard in clinics currently. And in this figure, the picture A shows a conventional EEG setup and people need to wear an EEG cap with many holes for placing the EEG electrodes. And picture B is a white electrode which requires a conductive gel. <clears throat> and the conductive gel is required for lowering the skin and electrode contact impedance for high quality EEG signal acquisition. However, it also has some drawbacks because the conductive gel dries over time, limiting signal quality. And this, and this is uh, difficult to set up and people maybe feel uncomfortable to use. So in order to overcome these limitations, many novel EEG electrodes have been developed to improve this, such as dry electrodes, semi-dry electrodes, and many kinds of flexible electrodes. Okay, let's move on to the EEG electrodes manufacturing methods. In this part, I will introduce the printed electrodes, including 3D printed, screen printed, and inkjet printed electrodes, and as well as the now printed electrodes, such as molded electrodes and electrodes made by chemical fabrication. Here, I need to highlight this is a review of all the paper I can find in the field of the flexible and printable EEG electrodes in Google Scholar and IEEE Explorer. Okay, the first type is the 3D printed dry electrodes. And the classic shape of this is a fingered electrodes with a few fingers on a small disc. And these fingers are used for penetrating through the hair. And the 3D printed electrodes are easy for personalization. So we can print different sizes, different shapes for different measurement size and different types of hair to make it best suitable for different people. And one benefit of this is uh, it's quick to manufacture. And normally it requires a conductive coating because the material used for making the electrode is non-conductive itself. So the silver and the silver chloride ink is always a popular choice for this. Also, it doesn't require conductive gel, which is an advantage compared to the white electrode However, it, has, it also has some limitations. It has a relatively high contact impedance and the dry electrode fingers may cause discomfort to the users. 
And the figure in this slide shows some examples of 3D printed dry EEG electrodes. The picture A is a flexible 3D printed electrodes made of a flexible plastic material to improve the very compass. The picture B, this slide, this, this electrode has a coiled spring, which enables this, this electrode move freely up and down to have a better connect to the scalp. And the picture C is a concentric ray-shaped electrode, including an inner ring and an outer ring. And this electrode also combines the machine learning algorithm to remove the artifacts and, and to improve the sensing performance. And then the next type is a screen printed electrodes. And screen printed electrodes are always made into an electrode array, which is printed onto a flexible substrate. And here, the temporary tied to paper is always a popular choice of the substrate. And it is always disposable. And compared to the, compared to the white and dry electrode, as this type is much more comfortable to use and very suitable for long-term EEG recording. As we can see from the figure on the right, the electrode array are always made into specific shape to match up the particular region of the head. The picture A and B are used on forehead. And the picture C is used on around the air region, but they are all, but they are all for hair-free brain regions. So clearly, it's very hard to apply this type uh, on the head regions. And this is still a very challenging problem so far. Then the next type is inkjet printed electrodes. And actually, the inkjet printing and the screen printing share many materials and have many common points at the technical level. But the inkjet printing is an all digital technology which means we can rapidly change the parameter settings, the shapes, the designs for personalization. And it also generates less waste of ink than the screen printing. And currently, the most of inkjet printed electrodes are mainly the conformal type two based electrodes, which is very thin and soft, and, very, and also very suitable for hairless region. As we can see from the figure on the right, the picture A is a P-dot PSS uh, electrode printed on the title paper and used on the shaved head. And the picture B is a silver electrode printed on the title paper and used on behind the air region. So clearly, hair still remains a major obstacle for this type. And then let's move on to the non-printed approaches to flexible EG sensors. The first type of this is molding. Molding is a traditional um, manufacturing technique. And the molded EEG electrodes also has a finger-like shape currently, and which is very similar to the 3D printed dry electrodes we discussed above. Um, but this type has a better integrity of the shape and structure than the 3D printed electrodes, but that's not easy for personalization. And the finger five shows an example of a molded flexible EEG electrode uh, made of a, a bit of a flex, made of flexible plastic material. And the other type is summarized as a, the chemical and clean room based methods. And the specific methods for each research is very different. And as we can see from the figure on the right below, the so picture A is a graphite electrode, which is ultra safe and nearly invisible and very comparable to the inkjet printed electrodes. And, and picture B is a chemically synthesized electrode made of sponge and silver nanoware. And the softness of the sponge will help this electrode to flex around the hair, which is a very good attempt to go through the hair. And picture C is a light cured P dot polymer electrode and this is a very interesting research because initially this material is a liquid and we can apply it on the skin and also apply a blue light for a few seconds and then the state will change from liquid to a solid and then the solid one has a good conductivity uh, for the EEG recording and after measurements is easy to remove and finally this section is a summary and a conclusion 
In this review, we identified three major challenges of EEG electrode creation. The first one is a hair. Clearly, it's very difficult to apply current EEG electrodes on head region, particularly for the screen printed and inkjet printed electrodes. So in the future, uh, in the future research, we need to we need to take more considerations on how to penetrate through the hair when developing novel electrodes. The second challenge is most of the research are still in the electro demonstration stage. They only show that a signal can be fundamentally recorded from a small number of people, but that's not enough. So more work on measuring robustness and repeatability needs to be carried out for real world applications. The last one is there is a lack of formal qualitative studies of Kung Fu for different users. So we can pair printed electrode studies with more qualitative work with users for better demonstrating the electrode sizes, shapes, materials, and placements. And I think that's very beneficial for the future EEG electrode development. Okay, this is the end of this presentation and thank you all for watching.